Uh, Assalamu alaikum dear students. In the last lecture, we studied about different types of inner products. We learned how to take inner product between two vectors. Then we learned how to take inner product between two matrices. And then we also learned uh, about taking the weighted inner product. And we also learned about uh, how to take inner product between two polynomials of degree n. In this particular lecture, uh, I would explain uh, why do we call a particular type of product an inner product. Like in vectors, we have two types of products. One is dot product and another is cross product. The dot product is called inner product, but we do not call the cross product the inner product. And why is that so? In this uh, video, uh, we would learn about it that why do we call a particular type of product a, uh, an inner product so an inner product uh, on a real vector space v is actually a function that associates a real number uh, uv with each pair of vectors uh, in v in such a way that the following axioms are satisfied for all vectors u, v, and w in v and all scalars k. Okay, so if a particular type of product satisfies these uh, four axioms or these four conditions, then we say that that particular type of product is an inner product. Uh, on a vector space, uh, real vector space. Okay, so the first property is, uh, the first axiom is called symmetry axiom. That is, if the product between u and v is same as v and u, then the first condition is satisfied. The second condition is additivity axiom. If we have three vectors, u, v, and w, then the product between u plus v and w is same as the sum of the products between u, w, and v, w. And if u and v are the vectors and k is a scalar, then k times u, comma v, the product of k times u and v is same as the product of uv uh, times k and the fourth axiom is uh, that the product between u uh, a vector with itself is always greater than or equals to zero and it is only zero if u is zero itself if any product uh, on a vector space uh, satisfy these axioms then we call that uh, an inner product so let me explain uh, a particular type of product uh, in this example then you will know that how can we uh, check whether a particular type of product is inner product or not for this I'll consider this particular type of product in this Suppose we have uh, two vectors, uh, one is u and another one is v, and u is two-dimensional vector, v is also two-dimensional vector, and we define uh, the product between u and v in this way, that if we take the product between u and v, then it is three times the product between the first components of u and v, plus two times the second components of u and v. Actually, this is uh, known as weighted inner product and I have already explained that in my previous lecture. Let me explain it over here again. Suppose we have u1, uh, u equals to u1 comma u2 and if we have another vector that is u v1 and v2 then the weighted product between u and v is written as w1 or uh, I should write here phi1 because I'll uh, use another vector w so I'll just change the notation phi1 
then the product of first component that is u1 v1 plus phi2 that is the second weight and then u2 v2 so this particular product is called weighted uh, product and i'll show that with the help of these four axioms that this is actually uh, the inner product and we call that weighted inner product so uh, in our particular examples we have some particular y values of phi 1 and phi 2 i mean we have some particular weights and those weights are let me show you those uh, weights are actually 3 and 2 that is phi 1 is 3 and phi 2 is 2 okay so this is a kind of product and we need to check whether or not this kind of product is an inner product so we will test those four axioms one by one and if all those axioms are satisfied then this type of product is an inner product okay so let me uh, check those axioms one by one the first axiom is symmetry axiom that the product between u and v is same as product between v and u okay so that is uh, actually obvious from this uh, expression if we take uv then the components of u would uh, come before v1 and here u2 would come before v2 but if we take v u then it would be v1 u1 and this would be v2 u2 because u1 v1 u2 v2 are real numbers so their product is commutative i mean we can change u1 with v1 and v with u2 so the answer would be same that is why we say that that u the product between u and v is equal to product between v and u that is obvious okay so now let's discuss the second axiom that is additivity uh, property uh, which is uh, written over here that is u plus v the product of u plus v with w is same as the sum of products of u with w and v with w so we take another vector w that is w1 w2 and that was the reason in weighted uh, inner product i took uh, the weights to be phi i's rather than w i's that i took in the previous lecture uh, because I had to take uh, a vector w over here that is why I changed the notation and I replaced the weights with phi i's so let's uh, let's take w w to be another vector that is the same in r2 that is two dimensional vector and uh, if we take the left hand side of this all we have to do is just replace the values u plus v is uh, just like u plus uh, if we take u plus v let me explain it on a separate page u plus v would be u1 v1 plus so u1 u2 plus v1 v2 that would be a new vector that would be u1 plus v1 and u2 plus v2 so if we want to take u plus v that would be this vector and then we take its product with w w has two components that is w1 and w2 so all we have to do is take a product of these two uh, vectors so what was our product that was three times the product of first elements of the vector that is three times u1 plus v1 times w1 and then we have two times the product of second components of the vectors and that is two times u2 plus v2 times w2 so this is uh, actually uh, the the usual definition of the product that we are dealing with so 
if we expand it because these are real numbers so we can just multiply them so that would be 3u1 w1 plus 3v1 w1 plus 2 times u2 w2 plus 2 times uh, v2 w2 this is simple product of real numbers then we can rearrange them in this form if we take uh, 3 uh, the term with the coefficient 3 then a term with the coefficient 2 and if we see that this is the same as uh, u uh, the product between u and w because the product uh, between u and w would be 3 times the product of u1 w1 plus 2 times the product between u2 w2 according to uh, this definition that is the star okay in a similar fashion uh, this would uh, turn out to be the product between v and w and if you see the uh, by if you see the value of uh, this is that was the left hand side and if we see uh, this answer that is the right hand side and that proves the axiom that this axiom is true because the left hand side is equal to the right hand side okay so now we turn towards the third axiom that is k times u the product of k times u and v is same as k times the product of u and v so all we have to do is just to re just replace the values of u and v in left hand side that is k times u1 u2 and then v1 v2 so this k is a real number we can easily multiply this inside and that is k u1 k u2 now we want to perform uh, the product according to the equation star so that would be three times the product of first elements plus two times the product of second elements so uh, that is the product how we do according to the equation star so here if we take k uh, common then we will have 3 u1 v1 plus 2 u2 v2 so this is k times u comma v because this is equals to u comma v and this is actually the right hand side so that is why we say that axiom 3 is satisfied because we started with the left hand side and then we uh, manipulated uh, the expressions to get the right hand side and that is why we say that this axiom is proved now all we have to do is uh, discuss the last axiom that is the fourth axiom uh, which says that u dot u can either be 0 or greater than 0 so uh, if we take u dot u uh, or uh, the product of u with u then it would be three times the first component of u with u plus two times the component of the second component of u with u so this is the product of u with itself if we see at this u1 is under the square so it, there is no chance it can be negative and this, this u2 is also under the square so uh, this will always be greater than or equals to zero because uh, due to these squares uh, it cannot be negative okay now uh, by this uh, calculation we know that u comma u is always greater than or equal to zero and if u comma u is zero then obviously uh, this result would be zero and by this we say that u1 this is only possible if u1 and u2 uh, themselves are zero there is no other way we can get this expression equals to zero so the inner product between uh, u and u uh, is uh, either zero or greater than zero and if it is zero then obviously u itself is zero that satisfies uh, the fourth axiom so by all these four axioms we conclude that uh, the product which was defined in equation star 
is actually an inner product and that I've already uh, explained that this type of inner product is called weighted, weighted inner product. So all those uh, products which satisfy these four axioms would be called inner product and <clears throat> for uh, those uh, that does not satisfy these axioms would not be called inner product. And this is uh, up for this lecture and in the next lecture uh, I'll discuss uh, the process of uh, I'll discuss orthonormal vectors and I'll discuss the Gram-Schmidt process to uh, obtain to convert uh, ordinary vectors into orthonormal vectors or orthonormal basis. Till then, uh, Allah Hafiz.